Thank you.
Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Stephen's and Happy New Year. And we begin a new church, church year today <laughs> because uh, our season of Advent begins today. Um, so thank you all for being here. Um, we are using the Advent season. Uh, we're going to have some time for reflection and we have the labyrinth set up and the candles and some coloring sheets in the back. So you can come early to enjoy some silence or you can take the, well, you can't take the labyrinth home, but you can take a coloring sheet home. Um, there's also some Advent calendars available. Some you can color in and some already are colored in. So if you're interested in any of those materials as you um, have a celebrate this time of preparing for our, the birth of our Savior, we invite you to partake in those. Um, we're glad to have you with us here in person and those of you who are joining us online. As always, all are welcome here.
the first candle, which reminds us that throughout history, God's people have spent time waiting, wandering, and wondering about the timing of God's eternal plan. Like the people of old, we, call, we long for God's presence to illuminate the areas of life that we are, where we are called to wait. This morning, we echo the words of the psalmist, wait for the Lord, be strong, and take your, let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. God of all creation, we declare that you are the eternal one. We confess to you, O Lord, that we easily grow impatient when your word to us is to wait. Ignite within us a new and everlasting hope. We pray this in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, holy and living one. You come to your people and set them free. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now, in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son Jesus Christ came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal. 
through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Our first lesson is from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Jesus Christ, for in every way you have been enriched in him in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you are called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read Psalm 145 responsibly by whole verse. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone, and his compassion is over all his works. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. Thank you, the glory of your kingdom, and speak of your power that the peoples may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. The second lesson is from the book of John. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us. Because, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. People were bringing little children to Jesus in order that he might touch them, and the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Amen. Please be seated. I'm wondering if there are any little children who can come up to help me today with my sermon. <laughs> if you want to, if you consider yourself, or, or you could just be a child, if you don't have to consider yourself little. Anybody? Kimberly's going to help me. Come on, come on. <laughs> All right, so you guys know we're getting ready for what? What does Advent help us get ready for? Christmas. Now, some of the grown-ups are having a really hard time waiting for Christmas. So, oh, you are too. I'm so surprised by that. What are what are you guys doing to help yourself be patient or to, to wait? Does anybody have any ideas? Yes. Uh, have fun. Have fun. Enjoy yourself. You're skipping ahead to joy. That's okay. What else? Practicing for the pageant. <gasps> Wait, what does that sound? Do you guys hear that? It sounds like a bell. Oh my gosh, look at that. Hello, wow, hello, how are you? Why? Oh, well, hello. I thought you were Santa Claus. Yeah, that's a great point. You know, there's a big connection between Santa Claus and St. Nicholas. Uh, Santa Claus is a Dutch word that says Sinterklaas. You know what Sinterklaas means in English? Anybody? Anybody? St. Nicholas. St. Nicholas. That's right. Oh. It's a great story, but I mean, obviously you've got a lot going on. I don't want to interrupt you. Oh, story. no, please. All are welcome here at St. Stephen's. We'd love to know more about you. Well, okay. All right. Well, I want you to know I was a, I was, I'm from the ancient city of Myra in a country that's now called Turkey. Back in those Why days. Why did they name it that? I don't know. It's not named after the Turkey we know about. Back <laughs> then, it was part of the Roman Empire. This is a couple hundred years ago after Jesus lived. And Christianity was new, and people were excited about Christianity. And uh, people heard Jesus, about Jesus, his miracles, his sacrifice, his message of love. And people started becoming Christians, including in my run from. And how did you learn about Jesus? Well, my parents, my parents became Christians. They, uh, they heard the message. They heard the, about the miracles. They heard Jesus' love and his generosity and his love for the poor. And they became Christians. They, they raised me up to be one, too. Uh, you know, and then I was a young man. I came into my inheritance, and I had a lot of money. I, I was rich. I had a big house. I had, yeah. <laughs> oh, I I thought it was I thought it was pretty hot stuff. I had a big house. I had a lot of food. I, I could eat. I had horses. I had stables. I had servants. But you know, it just didn't work that well for me. I realized what I was doing, just living like a rich guy, wasn't what Jesus had in mind. I remember the story that Jesus told me from the rich guy came to him and said, "Hey Jesus, how do I get to heaven?" And Jesus said, "Get rid of all your stuff. Give away all your wealth and follow me." So that's what I started to do. I gave away my wealth. I started looking around at my neighbors, seeing what help they might need, giving my money to them, help doing acts of kindness. Eventually, I, I became a priest and eventually a bishop. Wow. And then what happened? Well, you know, I, my word spread. I got more, more well-known for what I was doing. In fact, there's a great story about this. 
where there were these poor guys in my town, Myra, and he had three beautiful, smart, sweet daughters. So do I. How about that? <laughs> this guy was really poor, though, and his daughters seemed to have a hard time setting off his daughters into their, their new life as, as grown-ups. He didn't know what to do. In fact, he was thinking he's got to sell off his daughters to be servants. One of the rich guys. I said, oh, I can't be. That can't be. That is really sad. I felt the same. So I snuck up one night, late at night, I snuck over to his house, got up on the roof, and I dropped three gold sacks, sacks with gold in them, down through the window into his house. The kid, they woke up the next morning, there were the sacks of gold to start his daughters on their new life as prosperous people of Myra. Mm -hmm. So that, that sort of thing spread around. Before you knew, other people were seeing that and they're saying, we need, to, we need to follow Jesus' lead. We need to be generous to our friends. We need to look out for strangers. We need to be kind to people who are in need and help them. And, it, and it eventually it became a thing in that time of year called St. Nicholas Day. Mm -hmm. and that's especially people would think about looking out and helping their neighbors, helping people in need, giving gifts. And so it was going great, but we were in the Roman Empire. You know, in the early days of the Roman Empire, Christians were not, were not popular. <laughs> the Roman Empire was scared of Christians because Christians didn't say, oh, bless you, Emperor, we worship you. They worship the, the, true, the true God. They worship Jesus. The Romans didn't like that. And they persecuted us Christians. They threw me into prison in Myra. Wow. A lot, of, a lot of my friends. You went to jail? Oh, uh, I did. And it was tough. It was tough. It was cold. It was dark. There wasn't much food. And I was in there a long time. But I did not. I did not give up my faith. I did not turn away from Jesus, and that kept me going while I was in prison until I got to be a, kind of an old guy like I am now with an old white beard. <laughs> so uh, I want you all to remember now, Christmas is fun. It's a lot of fun. Uh, but don't forget, what gifts are about is having a generous heart like Jesus had and looking out for your neighbors and doing acts of kindness. So keep that in mind when you're, when you're heading toward us. Head for Christmas. All right. Thank you so much, St. Nicholas. Right. I'm so glad you could visit us today. Right. Have a blessed Advent and a wonderful celebration of Christmas, y'all. Oh, yeah. Speaking of, uh, speaking of generosity, I've got some goodies, some golden goodies for some kids might be interested. Oh, anybody, anybody want some gold? Of course. Take several. Take several. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, oh. You're going to be rich in chocolate. You. <laughs> Maybe we'll let the grown-ups have some at coffee hour. We'll see. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thanks. Here's for you too. All right. Thank All right. you. Right. Thank right. you, St. Right. Nicholas. Right. Thank you. All right, you guys can go back to your seats. You are done. Thank you for your help. So I hope uh, as we begin this Advent season that we can all remember um, one of the things we do as we're waiting patiently or impatiently is to remember the hope that we have in Jesus and to share the love that we have and the gifts that we have with other people around us. And that's how we celebrate this season. The end. <laughs> Happy Advent. You would rise and join with me in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of on being the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the father he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end we 
believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In joyful expectations, let us pray to our Savior and Redeemer, saying, Amen, come Lord Jesus. O wisdom from on high, open our eyes to see your hand in all your works, that rejoicing in your whole creation, we may learn to serve you with gladness. Amen, Amen. Come, come Lord Jesus. O Lord of might, give courage, wisdom, and foresight to our elected leaders, that they may provide for the needs of our people and fulfill our obligations in the community of nations. Amen. Amen. Come, Amen. Lord Jesus. O branch of Jesse, inspire the witness of your church, that all who may know the power of God's for, or Christ's forgiveness and the might of his resurrection. Amen. Amen. Come, Amen. Lord Jesus. O key of David, open our hearts to the poor and the homeless, to prisoners and captives, and to those who live with injustice and terror, that they may be released from the chains of hopelessness and live without fear or despair. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O morning star, give light and courage to all who live in, with illness and pain, especially those on our, on our prayer list. For those who cannot join us in worship, especially Emily, Bill, Debbie, Mary, and Tony. Those who are struggling with ongoing health issues, especially Bobby, Cece, Amelia, Harry, George, Kevin, Chris, Kristen, Jane, Jean, John, Patricia, Polly, Suzanne, and Tom. For those preparing for surgery, especially Ariel and Dawn. For those recovering from surgery, especially George and Jean. For those who are near and dear to our congregation, especially Diane, Deanne, Olivia, Karen, Jan, Philip, Adrian, Kari, Carol, Kirk, Allison, Libby, Josie, and Skunky. Are there others who we can pray for? Maureen Lyons. O desire of the nations, grant to those who have led the way in faith an entrance into the land of peace and joy. We pray especially for those who have died. Especially Daryl Heil, Maxine Bracken, and Sean Lyons. Are there others? That we with them may be particular takers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Amen. Amen. Come, Amen. Lord Jesus. O Emmanuel, redeem our days that we may always praise you and do your will and grant that we may wait with hope the consummation of your kingdom on the last great day. Amen. 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 Jesus. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries we can pray for today? You can sit down, yes. That's yes. Right. Bill, are you back for more prayers? Today's your actual birthday, right? Yes, today is the day. Mm -hmm. 97 years old, our friend Bill is. Thank you all. Is there anybody else celebrating a birthday this week? Got plans in the, in the works. Ah, Charles. Next Friday, that's all right. We'll pray for you. All right, let's pray for Bill and Charles as they celebrate their birthdays. Oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants, Bill and Charles, as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace, 
and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God bless you. Happy birthday. What about anniversaries? Anybody got a December wedding besides the ones that are close to Christmas, despite the wishes of our priest? Just teasing. I'm just teasing. It's okay to get married close to Christmas. Anybody celebrating an anniversary this week? Is there anything else for which we wish to pray at this time? Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may light in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Now may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Okay, you can, you can be seated. If, you, if you've gotten your newsletter yet, you may have noticed we packed all of Advent into the first week. So, you know, it's going to be a fun week. Um, after church today, we will have um, an, a quick training for our ushers and greeters. So if you've done that or are interested in doing that, we'll meet up in the narthex a few minutes after, get, get your coffee and your snacks, and then we'll, we'll meet up here to go through the service. Um, we also will have our pageant practice here in the sanctuary uh, after you've gotten your snacks from coffee hour, 11.45, just kidding, at 11.45, so get your snacks by then. Um, we have, uh, we're serving St. Clair's on Tuesday. I think we have a good crew. We'll meet here at 3 to carpool, or you can get directions to meet us down there. Um, and then on Saturday, we've got um, some people helping serve at Habitat for Humanity uh, build, and some are helping serve lunch. And we'll also have our Advent Quiet Day, which you have a flyer about here in your bulletin. So if you're interested in attending, you can, there's a place to drop off your form so we know how many people. There'll be breakfast and lunch, and it's all free. You're welcome to make a donation towards uh, the cost, but you, you do not have to. So um, we hope you'll join us for that on Saturday. And then next Sunday, we'll have our Youth Fellowship Night, but we're letting children of all ages, including adults, come. Uh, we'll have a special kind of holiday theme, make some Christmas crafts and play games and have some food together. That's at four o'clock next Sunday. The quilt for the choir has one more Sunday. It could be yours. Um, help support our choir's costs for um, special music and special, uh, special needs that they have for our music program by um, 
by making a bid for our wonderful quilt. Uh, also, I, um, someone who did get the newsletter told me that we are collecting for Salvation Army, that is true, but apparently I said we were going to get gift certificates for the Salvation Army, which is not true. <laughs> right, what I meant were gift cards. So we support the Salvation Army in their um, giving Christmas to families in need. Um, you can bring an unwrapped toy, which we will bring on to them, but um, oftentimes teenagers and adults are the ones who um, nobody wants to get a present for. They don't love the toys as much. Um, and so if you can get a gift, a gift card um, for them and bring it, that would be great. You can also just make a donation towards that cause by putting Salvation Army in the memo of your check. We are also still collecting for our partnership with the church in Sudan. Um, most of uh, a contingent has already gone to Sudan, but one of them is a student who still has to take her finals. So we're going to send a gift with her when she goes at the end of this month. I told you we were going to pack a lot into the first week of Advent. <laughs> did I forget to mention anything? Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes, okay. Oh my goodness, oh, there was that. <laughs> That's right. Um, thank you to all the people who came yesterday and brought Christmas into the space and wait for me to be prepared for all <laughs> <laughs> yes, thanks everybody for decorating. Um, there, where I am, you may have noticed I am taking, trying to take pictures. I have a special Advent ministry. So, uh, and then I'm sending those out for a daily meditation so, uh, and reflections during the Advent season. So I promise I won't, you won't get an email from me every day for the rest of your life, but you will get an email from me every day for the next 20 days as we celebrate the season of Advent and celebrate all of the wonderful gifts of our congregation. So... Um, we are glad that you're here, and let us continue to share in the spirit of St. Nicholas by being generous, returning our gifts to God, and sharing with those who are in need.
want to remind you that this is God's table and God makes a place for all people. So wherever you are on your journey, all are welcome here. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places. Our true and loving God, through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high, by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out of the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, Holy One of blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout with joy. creator of all. Your word has never been silent. You called a people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into life, reconciled us to you and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends and said, drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ's coming and glory and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Rising, you restore our death. Rising, you restore our life. Christ Jesus, come and glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ 
and in the fullness of time, gather us with all your people into the joy of our true eternal home. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ who dwells in you is coming to make all things new.
Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation, and you have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people, heaven and on earth. Now send us forth into the world, Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life. Christ our Savior. Amen. Okay. Kiff will be going to visit Bobby today. Let's pray for him. On behalf of this community, I send you forth so that those whom you visit may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We are many one body. Because we all share one bread, one cup. Amen. Thanks to you. Uh, I have one more announcement. You can stay standing. I'll keep make it short. In the midst of all of our Advent um, events, I for, neglected to mention we have had two changes in our staff. Um, Natalie Ryan is no longer working as our parish administrator, so our office hours will be a little bit reduced during this month. And if you're available to come in and help um, volunteer in the office, please let me know. And also, sadly, Gwen will be retiring at the end of this month, um, and so we will have a special um, celebration of her on the 17th, so please plan to join us for that. May the sun of righteousness shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia.